All right. So you want you do you want to start with an intro? Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay, so. cool. All right. I am good to go. Let's give it like five seconds of silence and then you can start. Okay. All right. Welcome to the Delvin Cox Experience, the podcast, which each week I am on a one-man mission to unite our culture through diversity. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and this week I have a special guest with me. Let them know who you are, brother. I am. I am. I just said that in a really, really cool way, actually. That was kind of a, <laughs> I am. Uh, I am Ian McKenzie. Uh, I am a comic book artist and animation guy. And uh, I'm very excited to be talking to you, Delvin, because uh, I was looking at your stuff uh, and your other podcast things, and it, it all looks really good, dude. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I also appreciate it. we're like literally fast becoming friends. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to do this. I already want to do this again. Yeah, like we, we were on a Jay Sandler's podcast together. Now we're doing this together. We're like chumming it up and everything. I think this is dope. It's very funny because like pod, the podcasting world, everybody, it's so weird because everybody's like ah, yeah. the stereotype is that everybody is making podcasts right yes but the reality is like that ain't really that true to be honest like and so what's funny is that much like the comic art community and the animation art community and writers and things like that the podcast community is actually a pretty small world and i feel yes. like a lot of a lot of people really do kind of know each other and follow each other and help each other out and that's what we experienced talking to Jay and all that, where I had never heard of you. And then I immediately was all like, I am Googling this man. And so that's how I was all like, dude, I want to be on your fucking show, man. That's awesome. As always, we start off the podcast with the five for five. Five questions, five asked to get the bowling. Ian, are you ready? I am very, very, wait, am I ready? Hold on. Okay. Am I ready? You know what? Hang on. getting ready that was supposed to be a bong noise but it was just me drinking water um <laughs> <laughs> i am ready yes all right question number one what is the best album or song you've listened to in the past year and it does not have to be new from the past year yes oh shit dude okay so the problem here is that i haven't listened to new music in a long time because doesn't i have to be new. okay okay <sighs> But it has to be from the past year. Yeah, like last, anytime this, dude, the last 360, what, 365 days? Yeah. Okay. If you listen to a song, you're like, yeah, this is my jam. Okay. Um. All right. Fuck. Uh, this is really, this is super hard. Okay. Uh. All right. Okay. I got one. I got one. Um. All right. Uh. The best, the best album or the best song? Either one. Okay. They recently released a remix of um, a, uh, oh God, uh, um beastie boys uh but it was like a fat boy slim remix of a beastie boys song from hello nasty that i've list that they re-released about it was maybe a little bit over a year ago but only by like maybe a month um of i believe remote control i think uh but uh, here's the things like beastie boys are like my favorite band so i'm always gonna go with those guys uh okay. otherwise otherwise they did uh, there's a lot of like remasters coming out, right? Um, and you know what? <sighs> if I'm gonna be a total dickhead, um, I'm also gonna say like the uh, I listen to a lot of musicals. Okay. Okay. I'm not I'm not really like pumped to admit that, but at the same time, I'm kind of like go fuck yourself if you don't listen to musicals because you're missing out big time. Um, they also they did a they they did do oh man and i hate to say this because i liked the music i did not like the play but they did do a remaster of the fucking hamilton soundtrack which i actually enjoyed quite a bit oh okay it's funny you should mention that because that's literally the movie my daughter's trying to get me to watch it's fine i'm saying i'm, yeah. I'm saying it's fine it's fine it's a it's it's cheap i mean all musicals are cheesy at, yes. at the end of the day they really are I, it, the music, it's, you have, if you go in looking at Hamilton, expecting a comedy, you're going to have a way more fun time than if you go and expecting some like poignant view of like racial, uh, 
uh, stereotypes and like history and, and things like that. Like if you go in, if you go in, like, I just want to listen to like some, some fun music and there's some really comedic parts and like some hot, sexy dudes and ladies. And like, if you go in, just kind of like, I'm here for a good time and you don't take it too seriously, you're going to have a good time. Okay. I like that. Because it's definitely not like, I mean, it's ambitious. I will give it that. It's very ambitious. But it's not the history lesson that, like, your cool history teacher who, like, puts his leg up on the fucking chair and throws his jacket over his shoulder is like, let me rap with you guys. about like, he's not, it's, yeah. it's not, that is, is that, if you expect that, you're going to be disappointed. Okay. That's good to know. So, but otherwise, I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I watched it with my mom, which was very interesting. That's cool. That's actually really cool, actually. Yeah, she didn't know anything about it. Yeah, so, but it was like, I, <laughs> which was just me, which was just her going like, is that Hamilton? I'd be like, wait, <laughs> he's coming up. <laughs> is that guy Hamilton? No, it, no, he's not. Ha is that guy Hamilton? No, that, no yes, that guy is Hamilton. <laughs> he's not Hamilton. It's that guy that's Hamilton. So that was the whole thing. <laughs> I, I've experienced that before, and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not very fun to be like, no. It, yeah, they're all different people. Yes. Question number two. Question this number a, two. Numero this dos. Is a, this is a fun, easy question. Well, I don't okay. know if it's easy or not, depending on who you pick. Chip or Dale? Oh, man. Okay. Um, okay, I actually have very – I have an extreme opinion about this. Okay. okay. But, okay, so Chip was the guy who had his shit together, right? Yes. Dale was the goofy one. Dale right? was the goofy one with the messed up teeth. All right, yeah, so, it's, so it's Leonardo versus Michelangelo. Essentially, yes. Okay, I'm going to always go with the Michelangelo, Michelangelo version, and I'm going to go with Dale only because Dale, and you can fight me on this, you fucking Disney pieces of shit, but Dale solved more stuff than Chip out of pure accident, and I that is how I have lived my entire life. You know, I think you might be right on that. I am right on. I know for a fact. I delve it. I know for a fact. I'm right on that. I want to start watching Chip and Dale again now. Chip is fine. I just I'm not. I don't like the Goody Two Shoes, man. Okay, I like. This is why. This is why I don't like Leonardo, and I don't really look like again to get back to the fucking Ninja Turtles. But this is why Leonardo was never my guy, man. I was just like, I don't like the. I don't like the the super. I like the crazy dude who like whatever. That said, though. There's levels because then you have Raphael who's a little too unhinged. So that's yes. why I, I'm a Michelangelo guy. I am too, except in the 2012 Ninja Turtle series. Oh, the oh yeah, see that's the that scene. one is really good. <laughs> the pro the problem is are you talking about the Michael Bay ones? No, no, not the movie. The, the, oh, the, no, no, okay. The, the, Nick, the Nick series. Oh no, those are those are good. Yeah, that's in um, the CGI series. Where it's like a, it's kind of a kid show, but it's really not. Yeah, no, those are, those are good. No, I was, I thought you were talking about those Michael Bay ones where they um, made Michelangelo, I think, actually mentally challenged. Yes. Which was like, uh, that's a creative take, I suppose. Yeah, that was a take. <laughs> where it like, I mean, to quote a, a different podcast that I'm not going to mention here, but they said, uh, they were like, uh. They were like, uh, Michelangelo seems like he actually would eat a Tide Pod. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> it was like, ugh. Like, why? How are you doing this to my beautiful boy? Like, it's yeah. like, like a, you know, it was like fucking uh, the Godfather was like, my beautiful boy, how can you do this to him? So. I highly recommend the 2012 Ninja Turtle series. On, that was on the Now, is that, is that, is that's the TV series. The TV series, yes. Well, because they had a really awesome CGI series, too, with that whole thing where they were hunting down the monsters and stuff, which you, if you haven't seen that, you should check that out, because that's also really good. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Right. You, can't, you can't go wrong with Ninja Turtles, you're, man. Honestly, you really can't, yeah. Question number three. What is the dumbest thing, Ian, you've done as a kid? Now, we are. I am, I am liking how we're into... Uh, that scene from Aladdin where uh, the genie is explaining the rules that you can't do <laughs> because he does. <laughs> it is, he goes, rule number three. <laughs> and like, you, I, I, I kind of do do it. I think I did get that from Aladdin. You did, you did, you did go into genie territory, which I thought was pretty great. 
Because yeah. like, he's like, rule number three, like, question number three. He's like, I can't bring people back from the dead. Hey, you know, <laughs> whatever. All right. So what was number three? Okay. Dumbest thing you ever done as a kid. The, okay. Uh, the dumbest thing I ever did as a kid was I uh, define kid for me. I, I usually go college and under. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. That, all right. That works. That works. Dumbest thing I ever did. So there's two things. Two there's two things I did. Dumbest things I ever did as a kid. There's two ones like that come to my mind. I'm sure there's more, but there's two that I can think of. One was uh, I have two younger brothers, and we were all just kind of like roughhousing, having a good time. Like I was like maybe yeah, twelve, something like that. And you know, you're like messing around with like your brothers or your sisters or whatever, like chasing each other around, like kind of you know, usually pretending we're Ninja Turtles um, and all that. And uh, I remember they, uh, they, they uh, jumped into my parents' car and they locked the door, right? And me being the oldest, which that's where it's embarrassing, is I thought I could like use a twig to like pry open the door. And instead I just accidentally got the twig like caught into the door and basically like, then nobody could open the door of that car anymore ever again. Holy um, crap. So, and then it turned out that then my brothers also accidentally locked themselves in that car. So we had to call the police to break <laughs> open the window and bring them out, um, which was, so that, that was pretty stupid. Um, yeah. And then, uh, God, the other stupidest, the other dumbest thing I've ever done. I don't know. That's kind of taking the cake for me right now. That's a, that's really bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. My dad was so fucking mad at me. I've never seen him. I mean, I've seen him that angry, but not because it was he was like, you, he's, he's like, now I'm going to do an imitation of my father that doesn't sound anything like my father. Right. That's fine. OK, but so because this is for some reason how he always sounds in my head when he'd be yelling at me. But he always does kind of like this, like in my head, he always has this kind of like Italian New York accent. So he was like, Ian. Why the hell would you stick a twig in my car door thinking that's actually going to work? And I was like, Dad, I saw it on TV. And he was like, you know TV's fake, right? <laughs> and that was like sort of the conversation that we had. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know what? TV is kind of fake, actually. So that didn't work. That didn't work out for me. Um, and then let's see. The other stupid thing I've done... Oh, man. There's so many things. I can't even, I can't even remember what the hell is. Because A lot. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. Question number four. Hot wheels mm. or micro machines? Oh my. Um I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm going to denounce both of them. That's a bold move. It is a bold move. It is a bold move. I've never been I've never been a car guy, hence why I was jamming sticks into the car thing and breaking the entire <laughs> thing uh you know what i'm gonna go with okay mighty max that was a great show and mm -hmm. a great toy for that matter and that's what i'm gonna as far as small things that you buy and lose immediately i'm gonna go mighty max do you remember i'm thinking with mcdonald's it was either mcdonald's or burger i want to say it was mcdonald's no mcdonald's did a mighty max run yeah yeah they gave you the, either the mighty max toy or poly pockets yeah, no, it was it was the month that I ate McDonald's probably every two weeks uh, to get those fucking toys. And I got and you know what? Can I can I reveal this to you? Yes, you can. I got the Polly Pocket ones too. That's pretty cool, actually. I, I like them. They were cool, actually. They had some pretty that's back with McDonald's. I just just had this conversation with my daughter the other day. I was explaining to her. How McDonald's and Burger King used to actually have cool toys. Yeah, they used to actually. I okay, so you know, all right. Full again. Full disclosure. I so every now and then, I'll just fucking say it. I don't give a fuck. This is this is the Delvin Cox experience. I'm allowed to say whatever yeah, right. I want to say. Correct. Facts. All right. Cool. Just you know, obviously, we're not. I'm not going to be throwing around racial slurs or anything like that. But <laughs> I will. <laughs> Like honky or cracker or oh, that's happened on here before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the racial slurs that mean nothing at all. Uh, you honky. Um, anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh my god. Sorry. I'm just like. Oh my god. 
I'm still kind of reeling from that quasi date that I was on that I was talking about before we started recording. <laughs> um, anyways, um, <clears throat> all right. So, anyways, yeah. So, yeah. I so every now and then, I will like have a night off, right? Okay. And I'll have a couple drinks. Okay. I like uh, Delvin. Like, uh, okay. So, like, if you're if you're gonna pick a, I'm gonna flip this on you. If you're gonna pick like a. Uh, your go-to, just like, I have a night off, I don't have shit to do, I'm going to watch Loki or Breaking Bad or, like, something I'm going to chill out or, like, whatever, or hang out with my kid. But, but what's your go-to, like, boozy drink? Or do you not drink, which is also cool? I don't drink, but I'm trying to think now. My go-to drink, if I want to, like, like, a drink that I will go to automatic, probably a milkshake. A milkshake? I like that. That's a good answer. I like that a lot, actually. So, anyways, so every now and then, I'll have, like, you know, a drink. Mine is usually just, like, a vodka and soda. Okay. You know, try just hanging out, like, whatever. It's, you know, generally by myself, just kind of, like, hanging out with my two cats. <laughs> you know, just, like, thinking about the choices I've made in life. But every now and then, I just get this, like, hankering for a, for a fucking Happy Meal, dude. Nothing wrong with that, actually. And... Because I'm like, I get the toy, I get the experience. It's like every now and then it's just like there's something psychological about getting a Happy Meal that just makes me feel good for about 12 minutes. Yeah, I can see that. So I got, so I, three days ago, got a Happy Meal promoting Space Jam 2. I forgot those were a thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was Space Jam 2, and it is the... Shittiest toy I have ever received in a Happy Meal in my entire life. And Happy Meals used to really bust it out hardcore. You remember those fucking Transformers that were like, it was like, it would be like a thing of fries, but it would actually be like a robot? Yes. It was a fries, hamburger, a milkshake, and something. They would turn to like chicken nuggets, I think. Yes. They were fucking cool. They messed up, man. I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, so I got this thing. And it was Space Jam 2, and it's just like this. It's the Tasmanian Devil, and it comes with a little basketball. And then the whole thing is just like you're supposed to throw the basketball into the little cyclone that the Tasmanian Devil's. It was lame as shit, is my point. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, this is going to last about two. Like, it was, I was so bummed out. I'll put it to you this way. My, my kids are 13, 15 now. They stopped asking for Happy Meals maybe five years ago. They're like, fuck it. We'll just take regular food. <laughs> and so yeah. the only time they've asked for them now, and it's been recently, is because they've had, um, I think this, they, Dave, you said this is probably the best thing we've had in years. They were giving out like Pokemon cards this year. Yes, I have one. I think I do. Look, I have a Lugio. Uh, uh, Luke, 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 whatever. Anyways, I have one that I got. Yeah, you I've got. See it. Oh, the, see, that's a that's a nicer one than I got. That's the box that came with it. And it had like Pokemon cards and stuff with it. Yeah, no. See, Pokemon. I'll I will, dude. Anything. I will. I will do that. Unfortunately, I'm a huge nerd, so I play that fucking like crazy. But yeah, no. I'm just sitting there being like, oh my, like, what is this? What is this Tasmanian Devil thing? Like, it's like, what am I really gonna throw this little basketball like into this cycle? Like, it was basically like you're dunking on the Tasmanian devil, right? Yeah. And then before that, it was when they were doing that Scooby-Doo reboot thing, which um, I don't want to, like, offend you, but I hate Scooby-Doo with a passion unrivaled by 5,000 suns burning. I'm not mad at that take. Good. I'm glad. I, because I've only otherwise I would turn one Scooby-Doo show. I think that was what's new Scooby Doo, and the rest of them were just like got like the old one is boring as shit. It's the same episode five hundred times in a row. Yes, but anyways, so then McDonald's did like a Scooby Doo reboot, whatever, and then so I got this bobblehead of Shaggy, and I'm looking at it, and it looked like me. <laughs> And I was like, okay, hang on. You want to see it? Yes. Right, I do want to see it now. All right, hang on. Hang on. Do like a vague commercial thing. I'm okay. Hello, everybody. This is Delvin Cox, host of the Delvin Cox Experience. 
If you're listening to this episode right now, you are awesome. Also, go check out Crystal's Imagination Podcast. Her podcast is awesome. Go check out Who Would Win. That podcast is awesome. Check out the What Up Though podcast. Those are my boys, Mike and Otis. And I think that's it. Ian's back right now with this Shaggy toy. We are now back on the podcast. Holy shit, it does look like you. <laughs> it looks like a, you, a Shay's version of you. Yep. Wasn't that fun to get in my motherfucking Happy Meal? <laughs> that's the head bobbling around. That is pretty cool. Yeah, actually, that's kind of why I do actually like it a little. You know what, McDonald's? You know what, McDonald's? Thank you. Thank you for making a toy of me and not paying me for it. Yes. All right. Question number five. This is going to be the fun one. All right. All right. Fun. Ah, I'm pumped. Zombie apocalypse happens Walking Dead style. Oh, okay. You can take five things with you to go out and survive. Family and pets don't count. They can come with you if you want them. No, they don't count against your, your total. What are okay. the five things you take with you? Anything you want, by the way. All right, so I can take pets and I can take family, but they don't count against me. Yes. Okay, so do they count as the five? No, they're, they're okay. part of your crew. They're just part of your party. They're there. Okay. All right, like so it's going to be... NPCs, essentially. All right, it's going to be me, and it's going to be my cats. Uh, there we go. Uh, one is because I have, uh, I have two cats. And um, one is named Jesse Pinkman, who is a total wuss. He would be he would be not of use. But I have this other cat named Pig Rat, who I watched beat the fuck out of a cocker spaniel two weeks ago. So that, that was is pretty, awesome. That was pretty cool. Which I didn't know that, that was coming out of anywhere. So and he just fought. I was like, holy shit! But he's twenty pounds, Maine Coon, and just like. It was my friend's dog, too, so I felt really bad. But, like, he j- – Pig Rat is – I named him because he looks like a pig fucked a rat and they had a baby. Oh. And uh, – but Pig Rat, just, he's, like, looking at this dog and he's looking at – like, you ever been – you ever been, like um, – you ever been, like, in a club or something and, like, some dude's just, like, kind of staring you down for, like, no reason? Yes. You know? And then just, like, every now and – you know? And I'm not saying, like, go violent or whatever, but it's, like, you sort of fantasize about, like, going violent. Yes. You know, we're just like, why the fuck are you looking at me, dude? So this dog's in, this dog is in my, it's my neighbor's dog and the dog was just visiting. He's like this happy-go-lucky, like nice little, like, well, not little. He's actually a big dog, which is kind of the point. But he's like, he's just walking around and he's like waving his tail and he's having a nice time. And then I turn around and like Pig Rat is just like doing that club move, staring at this dog. And I'm like, what is happening? And so I say to my neighbor, I was just like, listen, like, you might want to get your dog out of here. Like, I'm not really, like, sure. And she was just like, no, no, it's fine. Like, it's not, he's cool. Like, he's not a big deal. But three seconds later, Pig Rat just Mike Tysoning this fucking dog. Just like, oh got him, God. got to put him in. The, he's pulling the rope. He's pulling the fucking rope-a-dope. Fucking, like, just boom, boom, boom. In the, he's got this dog in the corner, just like, do, 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 do. Just fucking like going on blah, 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 to the point where I had to like try and drag a 20 pound cat off of this like 45 pound dog. Just be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't expect this at all. Like, I'm really sorry about this. But, but it, everything was cool. So I will definitely bring him, but he's not part of the five. Yes. Okay. So, all right. So, okay. Pit, we're so let's fucking see. up some zombies. All right. So, okay. So back me up on some of this. Okay. Now here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse. I've been. I'm very anti-gun. Okay. I, I make, agree with that. I had somebody make, recently make, who, yeah. who essentially said, "Be the biggest and loudest gun you can bring." So you know, I'm the opposite. I'm like makes too much noise. Makes you know because as we know, like zombie apocalypse, they are attracted by noise. We've seen it five thousand times. Blah blah. blah. Especially if we're talking about, I don't know if we're talking about the slow moving zombies or the fast moving zombies. Slow moving Walking Dead style. Okay, so even then, even then, I'm just like I want silent weapons. Yes. All right. So I'm fine with. I'm not fine with a bat with nails because it makes no sense to me. Yeah, because zombies' head can get stuck in. A- it's stuck in their head, it's stuck in their head, and then you go, you're trying to, like, get it out, whatever. I think a machete is still a classic. Uh, I, you know, um, 
blades i would like i think blades work i think katanas work i think like all that you know basically but you got to be good with them um let's see so i would say yeah i would say like i'll i would go with the machete over a katana just because i think a machete is a little more like strong yes that's a good idea you know um i could also go with thor's hammer although i wouldn't be able to pick it up probably monia yeah that monia um well you, you, I think Stormbreaker, you probably can pick up. I think so. I think so. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think that uh, was enchanted. So, yes, you can pick up Stormbreaker. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. All right. I'll go with that. All right. That's two. Okay. All right. Three would be. Uh, see, now I'm, I'm retry. I was going to go the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII, but that is sort of just a machete, basically. Literally um, a machete. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, so, all right. Let's skip that one. Um, can I pick fake things? Of course. Okay. Uh, all right. I would go with then. I would go with the ability you have in Bioshock Infinite, where you throw crows out of your hand and they just attack everybody. I like that. That yeah. was a good ability. That was the. Is it a, a elixir you drink? Did you do that all? Yeah, something like it. it's. Well, I don't remember what they call it, but Such yeah, a good but game. That was the cool. Yeah, it is a good game. That was the cool. That was the coolest move they have, where you just like. You're like, ah! and then all these like crows just ah, attack, attack all these people. And I could see zombies getting fucked up by that. Um, then I'm gonna go. You know what I'm gonna go with? Okay. Do you want to guess? Hmm. A weapon or food? It's gonna be a weapon. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Uh, ash. Chainsaw. Chainsaw hand, baby. I like that. Yeah, Hail to the think, king, baby. I know, right? That would be like give me some sugar, baby. Uh, yeah, that would be. I would. That's. I think. I think that would be my number one, to be honest, because I feel like that would be the most effective. Now that said, it is loud, though. It's hmm. loud. Yes, it is loud. It is loud, but but it, it is, does seem like it's fun. But it is also on your hand, and you're cool as shit. I fucking love Evil Dead, so that's kind of my thing. But I love Evil Dead. I love the TV series. The TV series was great. And he's got the shotgun. So it's it's doubly loud. Oh man. So probably ah wow. The zombie apocalypse doesn't really pan out, unfortunately, for <laughs> Ash, as far as just practicality goes. So okay, so what did I say? I said machete, um uh, chainsaw, chainsaw hand, the crows from Bioshock uh, Infinite. Uh what was the other one I said? I was trying to think. I'm missing one. Ah, it doesn't matter. Um I'll just say a Molotov cocktail. I think that's a classic. Okay. Burning. Any burning ability. I'll just give that. Okay. I like and that. And then, all right. And then, like, all right. So, one. I want to do one more, but I want to do, like, a fun one. Um. Okay. So, oh, you know. Oh, okay. I know exactly what I'm going to say. And that is I set up my house like Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. I like that. Yeah. But Home Alone lost in New York. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, the um, well, he was... The floor that collapsed on people and the whole what there was a whole bunch of shit in that house. Like yeah, when they step on the nail and the floor collapses, and then he does the fake paint cans, and then he actually basically Kevin McAllister was trying to murder those two guys. Yes. And uh whatever, and then they get electrocuted, and then he hits them with the huge like rebar pipe thing instead of the whatever, and they didn't die for some reason. <laughs> That's a kid's movie. Yeah. I don't see how they didn't make like 47 home alones with Kevin McAllister. They made four, five, I think. They, they four made five. two with Kevin with the. Oh yeah, and then they yeah. Then they, then they changed to the other kid, and nobody liked. Nobody saw yeah, this. Yeah, and then nobody cares. They made a couple of video games too that are all terrible. Yes. Well, one those. one is one is a. There's one that is okay, but other than that, they're not good. But you know what? If I'm gonna, if I have, you know what? If I'm gonna pick out of all the ones I listed, I'm gonna go with the Kevin McAllister Home Alone house. I like that. I like yeah. that one a lot. That'll fuck up some zombies. I feel like that would really crush some zombies or whatever. And then it's Kevin. And then, okay, ah, see, but here's the thing. Would zombies respond to the fake uh, movie with the machine gun guy? You know, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. I think they would probably have a reaction. They'd probably go towards the noise. Oh, so you could get away. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. I'm going Kevin McAllister, Home Alone 2. That's what I'm going with officially for a zombie apocalypse. I like it. Yep. So, people don't know, so we're going to tell them now. 
Ian actually does some cool things. Let him know. <laughs> we're just sitting here talking to chat of like friends. Let him know what you do. Some of the things that you've worked on. All right. So what I've worked on, and I have to say, and Delvin, this has been very fun. Yes, uh, yes, please have me on again. Um, of course. Yes, sweet. Uh, so what I've so um, like I was saying earlier, I'm mostly I'm primarily a comic book artist and an animation um, artist as well. Um, I worked on the new Invader Zim movie that's on Netflix, uh, which you can watch right now. And not I not a big deal. By it. It's just working. <laughs> <the movie too. laughs> I'll stay. I mean, I'm just saying I'll stand by it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> If it was shitty, I would I would be like not talking about it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I also worked on Adventure Time, Hello Kitty, Ugly Dolls, Bravest Warriors. Um, All God. these small properties. <laughs> a bunch That's of no, th- a lot. nobody's never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have like a couple of my own creator own things, which is uh, Welcome to Showside, which uh, Henry Rollins worked on with me. And then uh, what I'm working on right now is a book called Hello, My Name is Poop. Which I want to talk to you about, definitely. Yeah, I'd love to talk about it because it's what I'm working on right now. And it's looking like it's going to be kind of a big deal. I I know. I pre-ordered the other day. (laughs) Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be kind of a big thing. And I'm sort of, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit about it. But nah, uh, you'll be good, man. Yeah, but I'm also feeling real good about it. so. So for those who don't know, let them know what this book is about. So, hello, my name is Poop. is a very is a really interesting book um, that is about this uh, kid named Will Poupe, who it's his last two days at school. He's in middle school, and uh, he gets made fun of, and he like whatever, like he's kind of he's like me when I was in school, man. Like I, you know, I got I got bullied like constantly when I was in school because I was I'm a, like I'm a, like a little dude, you know what I mean? Like I'm like a little fairy dude. Um, I don't know if you can relate, but, uh, like I got, so basically it's kind of about how this kid, Will Poupe, he gets nicknamed Poop by this bully, and then he meets this janitor named Icky, and it turns out Icky is a janitor slash wizard, and Icky gives Will Poupe the power of poop based superhero powers so he be- so that's why it's called hello my name is poop and he becomes poop the superhero and so basically like will can now use his poop powers so basically what ends up happening is will uses his poop powers to embarrass bullies and embarrass teachers he doesn't like and but about and then basically he ends up finding out that he's sort of become the bully if that makes sense Yes. And then it's about him rectifying like that. He's like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the bully. I want to be the actual hero that I actually am using my shit based superpowers. There's so many things also about this book that I've read about. One, the art on this book is fantastic. Thank you. And I told you when I talked to you on Jay's podcast how it reminds me of like almost that Invader Zim, that Nickelodeon style. Yeah. And it looks amazing. It looks cool. The story sounds cool. One of the things is I want, what I want to ask you about is the character mm. poop. <laughs> it's fun to say. It's just fun it, to say. It, it is. <laughs> when I saw him, I'm like, oh, this is African American kid, kid. That's pretty cool. How did you come up with that concept? What made you say, no, I'm gonna make this a little black kid? I thought well, it was cool. The so the writer, Ben. Uh, Kastner is a black, uh, is black. He's an African American guy as well, and he's he's the main writer. Um, though we've like been wor- kind of working back and f- like to in tangent, making sure stuff. So, and so we had a very long conversation about like just our different experiences, like being bullied and like having a hard time in school and things like that because obviously like his experience is going to be very different from my experience like because ben is black i am white it's going to be different that's just the reality of it that's just how it is like i you know i wish it wasn't that way but it is that way um i hopefully it's will stop at some point but at the time when we were young that's just like how it was and growing up in different things because ben like ben's from new york 
I grew up in Baltimore, so we were both kind of in vaguely, fairly diverse situations, right? Yeah. But yeah, we had we had different we had different things, and but what we sort of what we got together on was <clears throat> one was um, Ben and I connected a lot because we were both like short, kind of chubby dudes in school, so we got bullied for that. Um, ben, like I said, had a, I'm not going to get into it just because I don't want to, but you know, I mean, I I will if you want me to. No. Um, Tell the story how you feel, feel fit, brother. Uh, just, you know, Ben Ben being an African-American kid and stuff like that had a way harder time than I did, you know, obviously, because that's just like how it was. Like, that's just, that was unfortunately the thing. And I'm, I ain't proud of it. That's for fucking damn sure. But like, we did connect on being like, I was, I got made fun of for being like really tiny because I was like a really small dude and all that, you know, whatever. And like, you know, I was like, 90 pounds soaking wet and a total fucking nerd and you know i didn't know how to interact with people and all that kind of stuff thankfully that's shit well thankfully i know how to interact with people now but i use humor to deflect upon that and what ben and i connected on was that ben also used humor to deflect upon the issues he was going through as well which was you know unfortunately his race was often used in the shit that he was going through. Yeah, I get, I get that. You know, and so, and it, and again, it's like I'm not the, I'm not gonna, I'm not the authority on it, obviously, but I'm just saying, like, this is what Ben has talked to me about, and he could back me up on this absolutely because we've we've talked about this quite a bit, but the, we connected very much on how we had a really fucking hard time in middle school and high school and even college to points. But we use humor to deflect from that, where Ben is literally a fucking stand-up comedian. Oh, that's you know, cool. it's very cool. And he's actually a good stand-up comedian, so, which is even cooler. Um, and then I, I channeled mine into doing art. I channeled my being pissed off about being fucking bullied by assholes all the time because I had a hard ass time with these fucking jocks, man. And I say, I'll say, I'll say fucking jocks, dude. I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. But it, which is weird because I was like on whatever it, I was on sports teams. I, I get it because when I was in middle school, and this is a little bit about my story. I, I dealt with bullies, Please. bullies and stuff like that. But I went to my school was mixed; it was mostly black and Hispanic. So I didn't never have to deal with because I li lived in the inner city. I didn't have to deal with the racism yeah. side per se. But I was a small kid in terms of, not small in terms of like short, but I was skinny, yeah. and most of my <laughs> other classmates were very athletic and big for their age. So they would try to I, they would try to bully me, but because I had an older brother, my brother's five years older than me, I knew how to fight. So I would constantly go to school every day and get in fights and end up beating the shit out of a lot of these bullies. What was the what was the worst one? The worst um fight? Yeah. Third grade, I think I had one that was really bad where I beat the kid up really bad and they sent me home. And when, like me and him got in a fight and stuff like that. I mean, it's, th it's third fucking grade. Before yeah. any anybody listening is all like, ah, blah, blah. Yeah. it's third grade. Guys, it's third relax. grade. Take it I, easy. I, I beat the kid up so bad that when I came back to school, he brought his brother to fight me. <laughs> like, and his brother was like in fifth grade. So it's like an episode of Power Rangers? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> so, so it's this weird ass thing where it's like, like, all right, I'm gonna beat this guy up. Now I gotta fight this big ass fifth grader. <laughs> and then I had to beat the fifth grader up. <laughs> Jesus. Well, all right. So, Devin, let me ask you this question. So. <laughs> You had, you had said, like, that you were looking at the book and you were saying that, like, you thought it was cool that the main protagonist is a child of, uh, you know, he the kid's black, right? Yeah, black kid. Yeah. Um, so I had, I admittedly had to take a second before I took on this job because I was admittedly, like, very 
nervous. Uh, well, not, ner- not nervous is not. I was very like just wanted like as a white guy, it was like I want to represent this as best as I possibly can. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't have the experience of being like a young black kid, at, obviously. You know, because of whatever. So it took. It did take me a while to agree to it and go like, listen, you know, Ben. Ben is is. I would say 85% writing this. I'm helping out with a lot of other stuff because this is actually Ben's first uh, comic gig, right? Okay. And I've worked on a ton of stuff. So basically, like, I've been kind of being all like, all right. And all, and Ben's killing it. Like, I don't have to do a whole lot. Like, I, but it, it's it, art wise, I, you know, I do have to sometimes like fix things and, and do whatever. And I do have, to, I, I do have to be aware that. I am not a black man. I am never going to know the black man experience. I am never going to know any of this stuff. So it did take a while for me to agree to the project and make sure everything was going to be solid. And I know you said you were looking at some of the stuff, but I did want to ask your, um, I guess, opinion as far as like, what do you think about a a not a what do you think about a white artist um creating and drawing a non-white character based around that book i'm fine with it I'm, I'm, i'll tell you why i'm fine with it because one you're and i'm not me. trying to i'm not trying to like get the like black no, no I, I, i'm just I, saying I, like you know what I, I mean i like that you're working with somebody of african-american descent if it was a if it was a, if the writer was not African American ain't ain't happen. Yeah, I think it's important to either work with somebody African American descent or get feedback from a black person when you're writing about black characters because so often in pop culture you get either a terrible stereotype of a black person. <sighs> yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, or you get something that doesn't match our culture. And I'm not even saying it like in general, like, you know, you don't want to, it don't necessarily have to be a poor industry kid. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. Ribby from um, Big City Greens. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. I love that character. Yeah. Because he, Ribby's, uh, he, he comes from an upper-class family, but he's very pampered. And when you see his parents, his parents are unapologetically black. They're rich, but they are, that's a black family. The dad's a former football player. I forgot what the mom is. And I like that aspect of it. I like the fact that he's not this just this poor kid who grew up in poverty and stuff like that. No, he's a kid who came from a good background. And, and when you look at that show, and Cricket, on the other hand, it's poor white trash. <laughs> and, but Cricket is unapologetically poor white trash. He loves being poor white trash. He doesn't wear shoes. He likes his country life and stuff like that. He's bringing his country life to the city. I love that show because of that kind of dichotomy of both of those two characters in terms of Cricket and Remy from two completely different backgrounds. But they get along so well and it's not like, and the cool thing about it is, Remy's the rich kid. Cricket's the poor kid. So you would think that Cricket would idolize the rich kid. But I'm not sure it's kind of the other way around. Remy looks up to the freedom of Cricket. And I think that kind of works well for that show. And I think it's a little cool aspect of their relationship in terms of like how Remy didn't even realize that Cricket didn't even realize that Remy was rich till he like went to, like it's an episode where he goes to his house and sees all this stuff like, oh, that dude has money. And then he doesn't know how to respond to like him knowing that his friend that kind of looks up to him is a freaking millionaire. Have you seen um, Big Mouth? I've seen some of the episodes, yes. There's a, there's a series of episodes that are, that I actually looked at that were really, um, I'm not going to say eye opening because I mean, I'm, I'm aware of this shit or whatever, but basically like there's, uh, there's this character, Missy, who's my favorite character on the entire show. Okay. And Missy, ha- it, it, her character is, she has interracial parents. She has a white mom and a black dad. Right? Okay. But they... But the what I love, well, not what I love about it, but like it's they delve into this thing where one is that 
her parents are just both nerds is like the okay. thing um and then missy is also a nerd and i i really kind of liked this whole thing where it's like you know she's white he's black but they're they love each other and they're they you know that's it there's nothing yeah. else to it they love each other like that's it there's no there's nothing else there really you know but later on they do delve into things about how like the white mom doesn't really know anything about like black culture and then this missy character who is interracial like goes through this big thing learning about like black culture that she's not been subjected to and things like that and i'm not saying this shit that that big mouth is a perfect show it definitely is not but i thought that was really interesting i thought that was very like um just like it's cool that people are willing to actually like put this shit fucking up now i think that's important i, I like that you brought that up because my kids are going through that now my kids um interracial. My ex is Hispanic. Uh. She's Nicaraguan. My kids, so my kids are part Hispanic, part black. My kids have always linked to their black side in terms of how they want to grow up and stuff like that. They don't know Spanish. They don't have the desire to know Spanish and things like that. And I try to push them to go do it, but they don't, they don't want to do it. And now, even more so, as they gotten older, they found hip hop. They like hip hop. They love hip hop. They're adapting to that hip hop culture, and they start like. And I didn't introduce them to hip hop. That's the cool, the interesting thing about it. I didn't like, like, here's some albums you need to listen to, or nothing like that. I just like let them kind of like me. I'm very diverse to my music taste. I hip hop's my number one, but I listen to stuff like Queen. I listen to Aretha Franklin. I listen to all kind of stuff. But them, they kind of went down their own path. And I see them finding stuff that I used to listen to, like, hey, dad, tell me about this Nas guy. And then they pick up, and my son <laughs> picks up Illmatic, and he loves Illmatic. Then he all of a sudden, he's like, all I need is one mic. One yep. Mic. And then, then, then he's like, I want to hear some Eminem. And then he he's listened to the whole Slim Shady catalog. He's like, holy crap, Eminem's awesome. And it's just weird, like him just watching. Okay, how, okay, wait, 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 wait. How, how old is he now? He's 15. Don't let him watch 8 Mile just yet. No, he hasn't. He has not watched 8 Mile. All right, don't. That. Just give him till 18 and then yeah. let him watch it. He has, he has not watched 8 Mile yet, but he's listened to every Eminem album. And he has, for some strange reason, read reviews on the albums. <laughs> so he now knows which Eminem album that people didn't like. And he's uh, like, okay, man. I see why people didn't like. Like, I think it's I think it's relapse the one that everybody hates. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, rel yeah. Re uh, I don't, man, I don't know. I mean, I, the, I, I like. I guess I like Eminem. I don't know. I don't know. I like Eminem. I suppose. I, I like Eminem. I don't think I'm like super Eminem fan. Like yeah, that, no, I would. I like. I mean, if I saw him at a fucking Burger King, I'd be like, hey, I wouldn't like be all like, hey, Mister yeah. Eb. Yeah, like I like, I like Eminem. I'm, I, I grew up on like. Like I said, Nas, Jay-Z, stuff like that. I was going to say, if Zach De La Rocco showed up, then I'd be like, hey, dude, buddy, I'll, suck, I'll suck your dick, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine? Come on now! Although that drummer's a fucking dickhead, so maybe I'll... Yeah. Right. Change, I changed my mind already. <laughs> but yeah, I just think that it's cool that my kids can go find their own, take their own path and find things that they love and they know and if they accept black culture, that's dope for me. If they accept Spanish culture, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, and that, so like for me, uh, so like my father, uh, I, I, I don't remember if we were recording at the time, but anyways, my, like my dad's in the Navy and stuff like that. And like, he's pretty hardcore dude, you know what I mean? But he was also like a big music guy. So my, when I was a kid, like our basement had fucking 5,000 vinyl records of shit That's from crazy. everything you can think of. Everything. And you know what the one that really popped out to me? Which one? Frank Zappa. That's pretty and cool. it popped out to me because it was so absurd. And it was so like just this guy who clearly had a level of music talent that was 
very far beyond I would like to I would school anybody right now if they want to talk to me about anybody who musically was more musically talented than Frank Zappa as far as just like being able to play instruments make music concerts all that kind of stuff I'll fight it maybe David Bowie maybe yeah there's very few in that Frank Zappa David David Bowie Prince, right. Right. Freddie Prince. Murph, Prince, oh, Prince. Oh, yep, yep. You know what? Oh, you beat me already. Fuck. All right. So, okay. Frank Zappa, Prince, Bowie, Freddie Mercury, maybe. Yeah. Although Freddie was kind of a dickhead, but um. And then you know what? I'm, who else I'm gonna say? Who else? Who else on your list? I'm gonna say MCA from Beastie Boys. I like that answer. I like that answer a lot. I think. R.I.P. I, I like Beastie Boys a lot. Beastie Boys. They're my guys. That said, though, there are also there's just there's so much content, there's so much music, there's so much stuff that is so easily accessible. So it's like when you talk about this kind, of, so this is where I sort of s- kind of stopped. I kind of I'm not gonna say I gave up on music, but I just kind of gave up on like trying like this. This is why I had such a hard time answering the question about like what the best album in the last year was. Because there's so much stuff. Yeah. But that said, 13, 15 year old kids, they can handle it. I can't handle it. I got old man brain. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of older music now. I still listen to some of the new stuff. Like um I on a couple of weeks ago I had Stan Bush on the podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah, and um he had a new album come out. So I said, before I, before I have more, I don't want to listen to I'm like, oh, this sounds really cool. It's sonically, it sounds like something you hear out the 80s. Yeah, I like the album because it sounded like that. And I'm like, mm. then I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of like, damn, how many song albums has Stan Bush put out since <laughs> like Transformers? I'm like, then I'm like, fuck, he's put out an album like every other year. <laughs> well, so I, so this is, this is really stupid, but I'll tell you, this is totally off tangent or whatever, but I okay, so you know how like you're in school, right? Yes. And uh, we're talking like middle school, high school, whatever. And like some people, you know, some people are selling drugs, some you know, weed mostly. Thankfully, weed. Uh, and <laughs> yes, uh, I'm aware. <laughs> you know, or like you know, they do that like class thing where there's those weird ass lollipops that like nobody actually likes, but they t- have weird flavors, things like that. Stuff for band camp. Blah, 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 blah. I was making mixtapes of '80s music that I would Ooh. sell f- that I would sell for a dollar, and I was making like a good twenty bucks a day on that. Just That's doing cool. like, putting together these like weird a- mixtapes of of '80s music. Because I was watching I Love the 80s, if you remember that VH1 show. I remember it very well. It was one of my favorite shows of all time. And I would just be like, burp, 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 like put it together. That's the music I listen to because I am lame. I was born in 85. So it's like, you know, but I don't know, man. I'm just, music is so, anybody can do it right now. And, I, and, by, and what I'm saying is by anybody, I don't mean in a bad way. It's, I mean, like, it's cool that, like, anybody can do it. It's more accessible mm-hmm. than it's ever been in the history yeah. of music. Like, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's where I'm going. Like, it's cool that, like, I can hear, I can listen to some random fucking dude from Norway in his basement making music with his chihuahua. You know, yeah. like, it's that yeah. kind of You can literally, like, upload your music to iTunes or SoundCloud yourself. You can do the podcast too. Yeah. So we've been talking like friends all this time. We haven't even talked about any of the stuff you worked on. We just here. Hang oh out. yeah, I know. I got all. I got all distracted. Uh, yeah. So Invader Zim, Adventure Time, Bravest Warriors, Hello Kitty, Ugly Dolls. Uh, welcome to Showside. Um, I what did was a- it like working on all that stuff? Because you worked with Nick, for example. You worked with Cartoon yeah. Network. That's has to be a Heck of a well, I, yeah, I worked with Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, so yeah, it was wild. Um, and uh, all right, so you, I'll, I'll get into the story. Um, so I'll do the short version though, because I did the long oh. version with Jay earlier, okay. but basically, like, 
I got invited out to a convention in Cuernavaca, Mexico, and I ran into Joan Vasquez, who is the creator of Invader Zim, who has, was my art hero when I was a kid, uh, who does, like we talked about, um, a goth mix with kids stuff, I guess yes. is the best way I can describe it. But anyways, I had met him through this book that he had called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, which was decidedly more the title is johnny the homicidal maniac it was decidedly more like hardcore it's more of an adult book obviously but it still had that like vibe and that whatever so i go there they sit us at this table because the, every single night they would do like a dinner a big dinner thing you know to like treat the guests and i was like this book free dinner yeah this is great and then i turn i turn around and fucking jonan is sitting right next to me with his art director jenny goldberg and I'm like, hi, you know, trying to be cool. Yeah. And we get to talking and then Jenny was just like, dude, um, we've seen your art. And I was like, that's, hey, cool. Thanks. Like, I really appreciate that. Uh, what'd you think? And they were just like, would you maybe want to like work on this movie with us? <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I just was like, I absolutely would. So next thing I know, I'm flying across the country and moving to Los Angeles and working at Nickelodeon for two years, making this movie. Making Invader Zim, which is amazing. Yep. That's super cool. It's really great. It's it, it turned out to be a really awesome movie. So I did a bunch of, I did a lot of different stuff. Uh, I did like character design stuff, weapon design stuff, prop design stuff. And I also did cleanup, which is just taking like pencils and making sure like it looks nice when it, you know, whatever. So I did a lot of I did a lot of stuff for them. So it was really cool. Also, Ian, you got a podcast, don't you? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I pre I appreciate the bump, but no, no. I'm working. We, on it. we can talk a little bit about that because I think it's cool that you're working on a podcast. What's the concept of it for those who don't know? The concept. So it's called Killer Tomatoes, and uh, basically, it's it's myself and my friend Theron. Uh, who goes by T and my friend Nia and uh, Nia and I laugh all the time because uh, her name is Nia N-I-A and my name is Ian I-A-N so we always kind of get Just flip the name around we always get mixed up but uh, no it's called Killer Tomatoes and we're we're still putting it together but we have some rocking we have some rocking music we have awesome music that goes to it and basically we're kind of just talking about like entertainment stuff, but we try to also tie it in with like food um, based things because we, the three of us are also like very into food. We like to cook, we like to do all this kind of stuff. So uh, for example, we did uh, this, we did one about um, the 1998 Godzilla uh, movie. The Sorry, Puff Matt, Daddy one. The Puff Daddy one. And so we talk about that quite, we talk about Puff Daddy quite a lot actually uh, <laughs> because I was laughing because I was just like, I, oh my God, I went, all right. All right. You want to hear this? I definitely hear this. All right. Hang on. Well, so here's what I did. All right. So hang on. Uh, give me one second. Uh, all right. So I had to do this live. I'm going to try to do it now. Okay. Um, I'm going to try because the thing is, Okay, here it is. Okay, uh, so the point I'm trying to say is Godzilla, the 1988 Godzilla, which I really enjoy personally, um, came out with a banging soundtrack. Yeah. Like, this soundtrack, this it, which I kind of think the fucking movie might have just been about the soundtrack. I'm not really sure. But they came I out agree. like... They had a, everybody. They had Rage Against the Scene. They had Green Day. They had Puff Daddy, who at the time was called Puff Daddy. So I'm not, yes. I'm not misgendering. Puff Daddy um, with Jimmy Page, with Jimmy Page doing a cashmere thing. But the thing is, none of the songs actually connect to Godzilla in any way at all. <laughs> in not a way. So here's what I'm. So I'm gonna do this, and this is gonna take me about three minutes, and I'm going to read to you the lyrics of. The Puff Daddy Godzilla song called Come With Me, which is just Puff Daddy 
doing lyrics over cashmere. And here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm going to do this very fast. Okay. All right. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Hear my cries, hear my call, let me ear, see my tall, see my error, know my tall, time, time, ten, when my lost, know I'm like a backtracking where I'm at you, pistol pack a negative finger, trigger happy, try to trap me, bad rap, why tap me, backstab me, break the faith from the falling grass, take a lie, let it rouse, and close your eyes, and I'm all, come with me, come with me, yeah, come with me, uh-huh, yeah, you said that trust me, you never hurt me, now I'm disgusted, something I'm adjusted, certainly you fooled me, ridiculed me, let me hang in, now shit is boomeranging, right back at you, you think long range, then reminded, let me bond it, I co-sign it, shit backfire, but I'm back now and I grind it, none of this actually pertains to the fucking movie. At all. <laughs> in no way. I remember this so much. I appreciate the song, but like, it has nothing to do with a big lizard. Did you ever see the video for the song? I did, and he was, he was, he had fair, he, his shirt was off quite a lot. Yes, it was Puff Daddy featuring Godzilla. <laughs> and then the Green Day one was just so like, didn't, it, didn't, it, didn't, it. and then they just edited in the, go in the Godzilla roar. And I was just like, jeez, fucker, because I love Green Day, but I was like, wow, guys. <laughs> I remember all this stuff. Burner, burner, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that was an error. But I will say this. In the contrast to that song, have you ever heard LL Cool J's song about Deep Blue Sea? Are you talking about Deep is Cool as My Hat is Like a Shark's Man? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I have, my That friend. is literally about that, the fucking shark. Deepest, bluest, my hat is like a shark's fin. Like, okay, first off, I will defend that movie for a forever. Deep Blue Sea is a great movie. Deep, but, I will, but I will also watch any shark movie because Jaws is my favorite movie. So I'll watch Blue Sea gave us one of the best Samuel Jackson scenes I've ever seen in my life. I just, we can spoil it, right? Yeah, it's been 30 years. It's like, I'm sitting, okay. I saw it in theaters with my dad, right? Who doesn't understand movies. Okay. Okay. Like he's like, he's just not a movie guy. He's a music guy. He's not a movie guy. Okay. He's got like, he's got like his solid five movies that he likes. Okay. You know, they're, and they're all like shitty, like, like biker movies from the seventies. Okay. Okay. Or, 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 uh, or he really likes John Waters. Okay. Which, cool. I mean, I, I love John Waters, too. So I met John Waters one time, but that's a whole other story. But anyways, uh, I'm in the theaters, and I was like, Dad, I really need to... This was, and this was, like, the day before I asked him to take me to go see Congo. I don't remember Congo. <laughs> yeah, Congo was bad. But you, don't need to, you don't need to know Congo. Anyways, but I've been like, Dad, it's, I love sharks, because I love... The sharks are, like, my weird thing. Like, I don't know why I love sharks so much. But I was like... Dad, it's a shark movie. Like, please take me. And he's like, fuck, all right. Okay, okay, cool. So we go, and we go to the movie theater, and I, like, we're sitting down, and I'm watching this, and it's like, it's fucking like Samuel L. Jackson. And I, my mom showed, was all like, Ian, you gotta see Pulp Fiction, because this dude, Sam Jackson's in it. You gotta see it. And I was all like, all right, cool, mom. Like, whatever. Mostly, I think, though, she liked John Travolta before we all found out about John Travolta. But she was like, gotta see this movie. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'm mean, Pulp Fiction's still fucking good. Really good movie. But anyways, so I'm like, all right, cool. Well, my parents went through this big thing where they were trying to show me like kind of all the like 70s and 80s like staples. You know what I mean? Okay. Like all the Godfathers, Scarface, fucking like, you know, all they the, show you the, all Warriors. the Quinn's years. The Warriors. I love the Warriors. I love the Warriors. Actually. Great yeah, the Warriors. Warriors is great. That video game was pretty good, too. It is. Um, so, anyways, so, like, I'm like, Dad, you got to take me to go see Deep Blue Sea. And he's like, all right, fine, whatever. And, like, my father is, like, addicted to Diet Coke. So, he gets this, like, 48-ounce Diet Coke, which is already a problem. Which, because there's a ton of caffeine in it. Which means he's going to talk to me. The whole movie. Like this. So I'm like, all right, cool. So he goes like, eh. so we sit down. I'm like, it's this shark movie. It's 
God, it's not a good movie, but it's a good movie because yeah, it's exactly. so shitty. Like it's hard to explain. But anyways, it gets to the part where Samuel L. Jackson is like doing his speech. And he's like, we're going to get, you know, because his whole thing was that he like, I guess, survived some like avalanche or something. Yes. Or whatever. And, and this is like the low point. Everybody's down. Everybody's yeah. in fighting in the ship because the shark's killing everybody. Yeah, and he's like, we will do this. And then the shark, like, busts out of the thing and, like, fucking eats him or whatever. Yes. And my dad and my dad was like, oh, they killed Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and he left. He left? <laughs> yeah. He was like, I don't want to see Samuel Jackson killed. And I'm just like, dad, I'm like 12 or something at this point. And he walked out. He was just like, he was lit. So I'm in the car with him later. And he was just like, I just can't, like, if they kill Samuel L. Jackson. Like, Fuck that movie. Uh, yeah, like, literally. Like, that, that's not right. They shouldn't have killed him. He was the, he was the best character there. Which I can't uh, argue with. Because yep. he was. But he was legit. He was so pissed and so jacked up on caffeine. He walked out when they killed Samuel L. Jackson. Well, he better not watch episode three. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Well, he loves Pulp Fiction, so he was expecting Pulp Fiction. Yeah. You know, he was expecting he was expecting Samuel L. Jackson with his fucking, like, Bible quotes and stuff. Yeah, Pulp Fiction's you know? Not, but I mean, like, what is a, you know, you can't talk, you can't tell a shark about God. Yeah, I don't think the shark's gonna listen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, no. But he was just like, I can't believe they, like, I, uh, they just, this, that was it. <laughs> I'm in the car, and he, he literally goes, like, that was an injustice to his character. <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, like, what the, okay, like, I mean, I understand it, but. This yeah. is a fantastic story. Your dad just, no, he literally, he was so pissed. Off, that they killed off Samuel Jackson. He was so mad, I couldn't, I, like, literally couldn't believe it. And he, and here's the thing. I stayed in the theater. He waited in the car for the next hour he and 12 waited minutes. waited in the car? Yeah, he let me watch the whole thing by myself. That's fucking insane. I was like, well, I was like, all right, cool. Like, I guess this is what we're doing here. I was like, you know he's not real, right? I was like, <laughs> you know he's not you know he's not actually dead. Like, you know, Samuel Jackson is alive and well, wearing his bucket hats, going to San Diego Comic-Con, man. Uh that is fantastic. I can imagine your dad like, fuck that shark. He was so pissed. Yeah, no, he was pissed. And is, I didn't I didn't know he had such a boner for fucking Sam. That is amazing. I was all like, what? And he's like, yeah, I just, I, it, that was an injustice. And it, he, they did his character so dirty. And I'm just like, dad, like, can we, you've had too many Diet Cokes. Can we relax here for a second? Like, <laughs> it was insane. Before we go, I got one more thing I should tell you. You're, you should get your dad an Alexa, Amazon Alexa. <laughs> and, and, and you know where I'm going here with this. Uh... There's an app where you can talk to Samuel Jackson on Alexa. Really? Yes. He will give you quotes. He will give you comments. He can tell you about your day. They have a non-cursing version and a cursing version. He's going to want the cursing version, that's for yes. sure. Yes, and you can talk, and Samuel Jackson will give you quotes from movies. He will read off, like, excerpts of interviews and stuff. You can ask him random-ass questions. He will answer them for you. Super cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, whew. I, yeah, mm, we'll see. We'll see. I'll give it a shot. And if I'm correct, it's free. He's one of these guys who is all like, I don't want the government tracking my voice, so he's not... But maybe, maybe for, maybe for Mr. Samuel L. Jackson, he might actually do it. Yeah, he might take a, take a shot at it just to talk to Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, he did the same thing for, um, um, oh God, who is the, uh, man, uh, who is the, uh, who, uh, remember Hannibal, the movie? Yes. Uh, who was the actor? Who was the red-haired actress? Oh, not not Jodie Foster. That was the other one, right? Jodie Foster was Clarice. Yes. No, but that was the original. I'm talking That's about the the, na the next one. The I'm talking about Hannibal, who the red-haired lady. I have to look it up. Ah, fuck. Anyways, he pulled. The, he did the same move on that one. He was like, "I can't watch this. They did her so bad." 
Coach, we got, he has his types. What is your, <laughs> what? Yeah, he definitely. Okay, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, Hannibal movie. It wasn't Jody. I know it wasn't Jody Foster. It was. Yeah, Jody Foster was Silence of the Lambs and. Yeah. I can't remember. Julianne Moore. Thank you. There you go. All right. Anyways, yeah, no, he did the same. We, I tried to watch that with him, and he left in the middle. And I watched that, and we were just in our basement. And he, he was just like, I can't believe they would do that beautiful woman dirty. And I was just like, Dad, you really need to, like, fucking knock this shit off, buddy. <laughs> but he's also, but he, but at the same time, you have to take this with a grain of salt, because he's the guy who, like, when I was, like, uh, 13, I had to get, it like, 11 teeth pulled, right? 11? At one 11. time? Oh, yes. Fuck no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I had to do that because my teeth were all jacked up. So they did that. So then I was all fucked up on drugs, right? Still on like painkillers at like 13 years old. So I'm like, so my dad's like, hey, 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 buddy. Like, what's going on? Like, do you want me to like, and at the time, like Subway was right next to the Blockbuster when Blockbuster was like a thing and Subway was like a thing. Yeah. So... He's like, hey, hey, hey there, champ. Like, hey, what, hey, listen, um, I'm going to go over to Blockbuster and I'm going to rent you some movies. And um, I'm also going to get you a Subway sandwich. What kind of Subway sandwich would you like? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I would have a roasted chicken. And then I don't know movie wise and he goes all right cool like um i'll pick these out for you like you know you've had a really hard time you had 11 teeth pulled you've had a really uh, hey buddy like I, i'm proud of you you know i'm proud of you champ you know give me a give me a little like nux right there i'm like yeah, okay you know whatever and i'm like all right cool so he shows up with the right fucking sub okay Little six inch roasted chicken, my favorite of all time. Although I haven't eaten at Subway for fucking years since that dude was diddling kids. Yeah. But that was a problem. Yeah, that was kind of, <laughs> kind of an issue. But he's like, all right, well, hey, listen, hey, and I can't, like, hey, listen, like, don't, don't worry, man. Like, okay. So I got you these two movies. Okay. And, uh, and Delvin, I'm going to need you. To, <laughs> if you've heard of these movies, I'm going to be surprised, but you might have heard of these movies. Okay. But if you have, I'm going to be surprised. So he goes like, Ian, I got you this. So I got you this movie, and uh, here's the thing: it's about, um, it's about these nuns. I am not making this up, by the way. Okay. He goes, Ian. Hey, listen, like, all right. It's about. So it's about these nuns in England, and these guys steal a dinosaur skeleton from their uh, nunnery, essentially. And so it's called Nuns on the Run. I've heard of Nuns on the Run. And <laughs> so he goes like, so I got that for you. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. Like, yeah. And he's like, all right, cool, 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 cool. All right, well, here's the thing. I got you actually two other movies too. And I'm like, what did you get? And he goes, I got you this movie called Freaks. I've not heard of Freaks. If you don't know Freaks, it is an ins- you have so you got to bring it back and realize that like I was high as fuck on painkillers at yes. 13 years old just completely freaks is about literal freaks uh from circuses murdering people huh yes and he goes he's thinking to me like that's a fun movie to watch and I'm that's like it. And I go, okay. It's rusty moving to bring to a 13-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, why would I walk? And then he just push it. This is VHS. And he just pushes the VHS tape into the thing. And I'm watching and I'm fucking crazy jacked up, just all like watching this, like what is happening right now? Like I'm just <laughs> having like this horrible time. And then he goes, uh, he goes, All right, well, I got you, I got you, I I got you this like third movie, okay. Now, this one's a little new. This movie's a little new, okay? I'm like, I haven't seen it, all right? But here's the thing. It's like, it's like don't, it, it, do you need some water? Do you need some, okay? Like, listen, like, so I got this, I got this movie for you. I mean, it looked like you would like it because I know you like monsters. And I'm like, yeah, dad, I like monsters. And he goes, all right. So this is called uh, Tremors. Oh. <laughs> the only good one I saw. Yeah, I was going to say that. Tremors is a good movie. 
And then he did it again, where he sat down to watch it with me and went like, I can't watch this, and then left. <laughs> so. That is awesome. That's it. Man, this has been a blast. Absolutely. You're welcome back on anytime. Let me know where to find your stuff at, brother. Oh, all right. Uh, basically, all my stuff is just at Ian McGinty, I-A-N-M-C-G-I-N-T-Y. I lucked out. I got all that shit locked in before everybody became fucking crazy. So it's Twitter at Ian McGinty. It's Instagram at Ian McGinty. It's Facebook at Ian McGinty. My website, I just got a new website, which I'm pumped about, which is ianmcginty.net, not .com, uh, because I had to fix it, but it is ianmcginty.net. And Saturday, I will be at StellarCon um, signing my books and doing sketches for people. And this is in Maryland. This is in, I always forget the fucking name of it because I'm still kind of new to the area. Uh, hang on one second. It is at the APG Federal Credit Union Arena in Hartford County, Maryland. So if you're in the area, please stop by. And if you mention the Delvin Cox experience, I will draw you something for free. And I usually charge $100. So you will get it for free. That's awesome. There you go. Here it is. All right, so you're just going to make me a co-host now, right? <laughs> you can welcome back on any time, brother. So you want to come on here when I'm talking to random people, be my guest. Yeah, all right. All right, cool. This was very fun. Thank you very much. Likewise, brother. This was a blast. Oh, all right. shoot. Tell about the book, man. You're about to, what I can find poop at. Poop at. Oh, fucking hell. The book is called Hello, My Name is Poop. It is coming out on October 21st. Uh, this year, which is kind of unheard of, which is, and it is going to be the biggest book of my career. And I really much encourage you guys to pick it up because it's funny. It looks fun. The colors are great. We're working really hard on it. So please pre-order it or just snag it or whatever. But it is through Vault Comics imprint called Wonderbound. And, uh, we've been busting our fucking asses on this fucking piece of, literal piece of shit. So, it's called Hello, My Name is Poop. It is by me, Ben Katzner, and uh, Fred Stressing, uh, edited by uh, Rebecca Taylor uh, Tay, and um, a, a bunch of other people who I'm not remembering right now. But we're working really hard on this thing, and it's going to be fucking cool. Also, it's on Amazon. It is it's on Amazon already, yes. Easy for you to find. Yep. Just Google it like I did. You can find it right there. Yep, and it's going to have a new uh, cover, and uh, we're going to have some posters and stuff as well. It's a big deal, guys. This is a big deal book for us, so it's going to be it's gonna be fun. Definitely. And as always, Delva Cox Experience, we are out. Peace. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>